Welcome back, everyone, to the final episode of the Great Ording Campaign, where I think it would be appropriate if we left the Empire with Realm Peace and with all of its land intact. And so, to that effect, what we're going to be doing today is going after Goed with everything we've got. Now, because of my actions last episode, we, uh, we have a small problem. In that most of the Empire hates us right now. However, uh, I think once we get our uh, overextension uh, figured out and uh, get Corvuria to like us again, because I did promise them land and I totally forgot to give them anything. Uh, but, you know, just small things, really. <laughs> once we do all of that, everybody should be happy again, I figure. Uh, but in the meantime, though, we are going to improve with them just to uh, not be insane in the membrane. And so, a little trick for getting rid of uh, AE is to pick up... Um, To, uh, to get rid of coalitions, just make sure that the target nation is above 50, and then uh, by default they are not able to uh, participate in a revolt against you. Ah, uh, coalition. Words. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and cancel this and then give it back to them, because I need some prestige to start a mission. The defeat at Morbin Flats led to fall. Emboldened by their successes and drunk off their victory, the Sorcerer King's men marched onwards to assault Kaleskandar. That's right here, where we just took. It's hard to say what exactly they were attempting, for by all regards, it seemed as if they desired to saber-rattle the fort into submission. Perhaps it could have worked were it not for Morgan, who successfully rallied his army. Some would say he had lungs of dames tear for his command on that fateful day. And soon we can finish the penultimate mission. First, we're gonna have to fix this uh, diplomatic situation. I don't want to deal with that. I really don't want to deal with that. Whatever. <laughs> we'll go fix it. Okay, there goes Hondurak and Lucerne and the Danish Temple. Also, start improving. With. How dare you, by the way, go ahead. Go and get my subject up, like, up in arms against me. Can bring Demoline into the mix. And that should soon fix everything. There's the Ryland Temple. Yep, above 50. Heck, I'll even influence him. Because why not? Doesn't cost me barely anything. Dame's Crown was also on that list. You, on the other hand, are actually rather expensive to... Um, if only you weren't outraged against me. If only. Ah, simple. <laughs> when in doubt, just spend, make, spend money to make the problem go away. We would have one whole voter who would vote for internal peace, ironically. As that is now what we're trying to accomplish. And I'll just make sure to get you. Okay, anybody else I'm forgetting? Dame's Crown, you're on that list. Such riveting gameplay, I know, but this is this is peak EU4. Okay, uh, and we'll also go for... Uh, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Whatever it takes to make them happy. There's Dame's Crown, I believe they're... Fine, I'll influence him. I didn't want to because it cost me two grand, but that gets rid of him. 
from the Coalition. Next up is Vrain. Vrain can have some money. Get them out of the Coalition. And following their victory at the Morbin Flats, the Kenorian forces marched on Kalaskandar, hoping to break the legendary fortress. Meanwhile, however, the previously defeated Free Realms army had rallied in Gwad and had rapidly marched south, seeking, and with the assistance of the defenders of Kalaskandar, broke the siege and destroyed the Kestinorian army there, leaving Eskan wide open for a re Free Realms invasion. Okay, and we can go ahead and even ally him, which definitely will get him out of the defensive coalition against me. Good. And anybody else I'm missing today? Yes. Yeah, Morian's one of them. Telgier's another one. And heck, we'll even ally you. Because why not? I got the time. Uh, we can definitely... No, we can't. Esmerine's gonna hate us no matter what we do. Okay. Istralor, I think I'm just gonna pay you to go away. Because you don't have a massive economy. And Belleclair. Yeah, you'll be gone in no time. Alright, Sagamber. I imagine you want out. Yes, you do. Good man. Might be like a yearly tech that they bow out. I just know it's 50. 50's the, the number at which they will switch from hostile to uh, friendly. And that's the number you should always aim to hit. In case you're trying to do uh, min-max, getting rid of them. Okay, we can get the next idea in quality. Eventually I'll want to build up some generals, but that's a problem for another day. How is the one hole? Oh, because I'm overextended. That's right. And this should be done by the time we finish our war. Okay, and I think we're getting very close to being able to actually declare this war. Rothan's a good target. Uh, we also gotta get improved with task As soon as one diplomat gets finished, we send out another. Exactly. And Dendiraj actually just entered their golden age, funnily enough. How are they doing these days? Quite well, in fact. That should be Namespay figured out. That's actually Telgier right there. And word spreads quickly. When it became news that the king of the newly restored Entevin sought to greet several leading figures of the Silk class, the word traveled far faster than the king ever could have. The very first thing that Alphonse I saw upon departing their carriage was a great sculpture. It was no regular statue. It was of Mogan. Every detail was carved in loving detail, with even the ripples of muscle upon the unicorn's haunches visible. Atop a gorgeous pedestal, at its base stood a silk color. Teeth bare in wide grin at the emperor. I assume this was at Kalaskandar when we made the trip there. Okay, we'll even start improving with you, give you some money. Tell you not to hate me. Right, there goes Order Eldracia. Good. Give you some money. I'm just in a money-giving mood today. Plenty of uh, ducats to be given out from the Ording Fund for Developing Nations. And unfortunately the Magisterium now doesn't like us, but that's perfectly fine fix that. A 
little bit of uh, Imperial Grace usually fixes this. And some money, because why not? There's Royal Sa Oh, we even managed to get Pearl's Edge happy with us. That is actually quite funny. I'll give them some Imperial Grace, because we don't need a ton. We're actually making quite a bit. It just gives them a good 40 opinion of us. And make sure I'm just giving this to all the city-states. Try and beat this back before it becomes a problem. And stop joining the stupid coalition, jerks. Trying to fix it. There, I've paid off dang near everybody I can think of. And sure enough, the Empire loves me again. Good. Turns out when you got money, people just actually tend to like you. Crazy. Go ahead and get the alliance with the Armory Temple, because why not? We'll even give you some money. Okay. Alright, and Converia, you look like you're trying to do something. So let's get this war started. Before you try anything crazy. Gwed hates me. What else is new? It's a massive coalition. We can bring in most people. You I've got some favors with. I'll ask you to prepare for war. You as well, Corveria. Prepare for war. And come on, get out of the coalition. Shoot. No need for you to be here. Keep improving with as many people. So. Just in the meantime. And fix this. Alright, there's yet another nation leaving the coalition. Good, good. And another one. Good. Keep keep building that list down, game. Love not to see people hate me. And I think I can even give you some Imperial Grace. Good. Gets you above 50. Our overextension is almost fixed. And I think that's as many, na as many nations as I can find to get happy with. Me. How about now? Okay. Everybody and their mother will come in. It'll be a fairly difficult war. But all we need to do is take his capital. Gawaton. Let's just go ahead and get this started. Okay. Who are we at war with? Let's start with that. Plenty of people dislike me. Let's go ahead and make sure Royal Sard doesn't get up to anything funny. 
probably wasn't a great idea to leave my military on the island, but whatever. That's a quick fix. Okay. Now let's start sieging down Telgir. Curiosity, how much... I don't think they, like, super hate me when I'm at war. That's not good, though. Okay. Uh, let's just continue our program of improving relations, though. Since we've still got the time to do so. And good, Corvurio's even deciding to help. And unfortunately, since this is a coalition war, I can't actually separate peace some of these people. So we're just gonna have to play it by ear. Alright, let's get you guys down to that fort. Oh, he's upgraded all of them, hasn't he? Funny, go ahead. And I'll even start improving with you if I can find the button. There we go. And continue the Hearts and Minds campaign, we'll call it, of the Empire. Good. That's all of my uh, minions figured out. All of my diplomats hand soon. Okay, there's... Now we're starting to siege the capital of Telgir. There's Royal Sard. He's got really terrible fort defense. Oh! Rubyhold, for some reason, has a massive siege ability. Is that, is that in his nation? Yeah, he gets a 10%. I don't know where he's getting the other 50% from. Offensive something, most likely. Okay. Already on speed 5. This just is a matter of time, I think. He says. Not realizing that he might die at any moment. The AI can always cheat. Never underestimate it. Okay, we'll get you out real quick. And see if we can snipe off some Goetti soldiers here. Just quick picks. Uh-oh. You figured out I was in Telgir. That's not good. Uh, we got a good guy there, at least. Probably would have been smart to put forts here, but, you know, it's not like I had a bajillion ducats of cash or anything. Crazy. Uh, as soon as I get that Royal Sard, I should be feeling pretty confident. Okay. And I think the smart move here is just to defend my borders and... Uh, actually, let's get you into this war, Wesdam. I would appreciate your troops. There's Traytoon, okay, so they can no longer hide back here if they wanted to. Uh, let's make sure they don't get screwed over. We can also get Tamaria out of the war. They're not a coalition member. Okay. I'm not going to deal with uh, the Magisterium. They're going to take forever and a half to have to deal with. Uh, we'll blast this, though. Good. There's Tooth Sun back under our control. Now we can push for his capital. And I think this should be starting to resolve itself. Great. Let's see if we can get over to Tamaria. 
if Mary is definitely in this war, where are they? Like, oh, I'm dumb. That's Temerin, and then there's Temeria, which is a New World nation. <laughs> Sometimes I can't read. It's perfectly fine. All right, but uh, in that case, then let's go after Indleberry, who is right there. Also put these guys directly on Gwed's capital. That should solve things. Or let's just take care of that army right now. No need to put it off. Uh, call the estates. Get that extra uh, relations. It's very useful for being able to get rid of uh, extra uh, diplo. <laughs> get rid of extra. Um, did you really get stuck on that island? Smart. Okay. I think I just need to take his capital now, and then uh, this war will be over. Right. So we can probably just doom stack him. Right. And all I want you to do is get back this land. Why would it cost... You're gonna make me pay aggressive expansion to return my own land, huh? Whatever game. Maybe it's because uh, I'm taking it directly and not uh, returning it. Uh, goes back to... Grotesque. Okay, yeah. It's because I'm not giving it back to the... Original Nations. That's why the... So angry. Starts with the B. Ballmeyer. Ah. You borrowed. Nobody actually court it. Okay. Strange. Alright. We'll take it then. Alright, and I think by getting Indleberry, it'll be a very simple uh, war. Uh, there goes my navy, he says. But uh, since we're not playing anymore, you don't need a navy. That's the beautiful thing. I don't think I ever really needed a navy, but... Uh, actually, that's not true. If we hadn't had all the money that came in from the New World, I don't think we would have been pay able to pay off as many of these people as we did. And speaking of paying off, let's uh, build up these forts. I remember I went on a spree, destroying them all, and now it's come back to bite me in the butt. <laughs> okay, there's the Siege of Greenlee. That can go back to Vertask very easily. As soon as I take his fort, I reckon his capital for it. I reckon that'll get the uh, war goal ticking. Which, after that, it should be pretty simple. And, okay, there's 22%. Indleberry will probably want out in a couple seconds here. Come on, take the 57%. Good. Get out. Right next up, I think we'll stand on. Uh, we'll go take out, I don't know, Silver Forge. And now I think we just need to hold on to things. Kill off Gwed's army, we should be done. Bish bosh bosh, done. Okay, good. There's a stack wipe on Gwed's army. That's 30k that I don't have to deal with. He's certainly got plenty of k's left, though. Uh, I could spend that. 
there. Alright, that should be another good victory. That's a stack wipe. That might be a stack wipe. It is, okay, good. Let's go south now just to clean up everybody trying to enter me. There will be Silver Forge in a quick second here. Oh, we can even we can just get out straight out right now. And you know what? I think I will. Uh, if only to help the um, the aggressive expansion go down quicker. We get some random land out here, and we even make Arboran the slightest bit happier by returning stuff to them. I have one regret in this campaign, it's that I didn't fix, didn't get uh, more fixed over there. Stupid borders. Adenica, Entebin, Eskand, Canor, both of our countries are renowned for their honor and chivalry, yet for entirely different reasons. Adenica embodies some of the earliest chivalry, but it is close-minded, allowing only nobility to... allowing only nobility to serve regardless of true distinction. We, meanwhile, understand the true value of chivalry. It is independent of blood, and that our knighthood is full of only the bravest, for our knights hold the hearts of unicorn riders. Any sensible man would agree that a knighthood based on valor and merit would produce the better knights. Go away. <laughs> but that is a wholly different matter from being able to prove it. Many knights remain, even after Adenica's collapse. Why not invite them for a grand tournament? where we might prove once and for all a triumph of heart over blood. I'm sorry, did you just say unlawful Imperial Terror? How? You telling me I actually got a core this land? <laughs> he, he said it's, a, it's Imperial land. Maybe it's this stuff. That's uh, unlawful. That actually makes sense. There we go. It has to be full cord. Nobody hates me for... Yeah, okay. Good. good. Just had to check there. Uh, right. You guys still don't like me because I'm still overextended in your eyes. Whatever. Parents. Um... <laughs> Let's bump this up to strengthen the government, and then we'll do this once more to get back up to 100% uh, prestige. Okay, there's the Grand Tournament. I sure hope this thing actually gives good... Um, a good uh, ending. Like a modifier, a permanent modifier would be cool. We'll uh, ally up with Telgir just to secure his loyalty. Same with Temurin. Why not? Simple to do. Uh, I can go up to speed 5. Okay. And no, he's dead! Aw, oh, man. I was hoping to finish the game before he, he, he ended up dying. Whatever. That's fine. Uh, in that vein, though, what we will do is go with the Improved Relations guy. Okay, now we got 70 whole Imperial Authority, with it growing massively every month. We could go for the decentralization, but I'd much rather click this. Just about everybody wants to join now. Good. And I can spend extra money on getting alliances. This way, it fixes itself. The only person that still hates me is Ralsard, but that's uh, kind of to be expected. Okay. Uh, good. And what do you know? With that, there's Enforce Realm Peace. 
We might, we might not have been able to get it with our old emperor, but his son, at the start of his reign, enforced it. Now I am curious, I wanted to test this. Does this mean I can't declare war? Oh yeah, I can't. Neat. Oh, that's good to know. Once you declare realm peace, you can't uh, fix your borders anymore. Huh. Well, I learned something today. <laughs> um, where was I going with this? Ah, uh, since this is the last episode, I always like to give a little rating campaigns while I'm waiting for this one to finish wrapping up the final mission. Uh, and I think if I had to give it a rating, I think I'd give it a solid... Seven and a half. Solid seven and a half. Oh. That's mostly for a couple of reasons. One... Let me just finish this right here. The end of the reign of the Sorcerer King was drawing near. His forces had been turned aside in the fields, and his acolytes were, or so it seemed, all dead. He had fled to Trial Mount for a final showdown. A battle fit for only the finest warriors of the Coalition. Mogan was not a poor fighter, yet his ability to ride did not translate well onto a mountain. So he was one of those who needed to stay back. The Adenicans, grateful for their liberation, saw fit to introduce the elves to one of the finer sports of Canor, jousting. During this tournament, the Adenicans were impressed by the prowesses of Mogan, with few able to defeat him in the joust, especially not while Mogan was atop his unicorn, and thanks to this, and his recent knighthood, granted him the moniker for which he is best known no longer. Which he be known simply as Mogan of Ording. For now he was Mogan the Unicorn Knight. Uh, right, seven and a half. I think the early part of this campaign is its greatest strength. It, it's, a very, it's a wild ride, trying to figure out how to overcome Laurent as a two-province miner. Huh. And I think that's its great. In the beginning, it's easily a 10. Um, but I think this half of the mission tree, pretty much, it, it loses the, the steam that it had. And that's for a couple of reasons. I think uh, most of these these um, modifiers over here, this tree of, well, where is it? That gives you the Entebenic Spirit. Uh, this isn't overpowered enough. Not nearly. Take all of these modifiers, double them across the board, uh, and you'd have this half of the this side of the mission tree be much better. Um, the second thing, this is kind of nitpicky, but if your whole point is to get army tradition and then take it away, it, it kind of feels bad, man. Like, it makes sense, but it's not amazing. Um, the other main complaint I have is that this entire, like, visiting places doesn't give anything. Like, it'd be cool if it gave, like, 20%, um, cavalry combat ability for five years. Uh, that'd be something interesting. Maybe it will at the end here, but I'm not really expecting anything. Um, the other half is that... The, um, this side of the mission tree doesn't really make a ton of sense. Uh, in that it's... Why do I have to conquer the area and not just have subjects holding it? <laughs> Given that it's inside the Empire? That's kind of weird. But, like, those are just nitpicks. This is a very old nation. Uh, I believe it was released... Uh, it was completed a couple years ago, at least... It's definitely not one of the newer ones, like, say, Tlocked, which, that's that's kind of a problem with uh, EU4 in general. That uh, older content just isn't up to the same quality as newer content. It is sunset. The world is tinted in shades of orange, even as the finality of black begins to creep into the land. Above the dimming land lies Darren the First, sipping a drink of such a crimson tone that it was red even in the dim. That's our emperor. 
to their right sat a man garbed in mail and the colors of an Adenican, gorging himself from a bottle of the same vintage. Ironic, I don't even think Adenicas all around. No, they never formed. <laughs> Can you joust as well as you, uh, wine? laughs the Adenican, a man who introduced himself as Sir Ad. I mean, I've heard a lot of it, and there's still a lot of good writers from Nascan. Darren the first side-eyes the knight, shaking the wine around in his glass before downing the rest of it in a single swig. Um, so yeah, solid seven and a half, I'd say. It's not... Compared to some of the other mission trees that have come out uh, in that time, uh, for example, Ruben Air, you get like 30 goods produced in a single province from their mission tree. It's wild. Uh, there's also somebody around here. I can't remember which one. Uh, I know Madelaire. Madelaire makes you get more personal unions than you could have ever hoped for. Uh, so Lauren's also, or it might be Royal Sard that has the interesting mission tree. Somebody's got a very interesting one. Um, but there's another that uh, makes undead farmers. Undead grapes. <laughs> so with that, uh, Ording doesn't have that much to compete with. But nonetheless, it's still an excellent campaign for, I'd say, the first... 50 years. A good, good. Two hours of excellent fun. And I'm willing to bet that this final mission doesn't get much. <laughs> ten, ten old admin points. The sun was overbearing on the day of the joust, carrying a heat with it that could be easily felt through the tarp, erected to cover the seating area. One could only imagine how it felt to the individuals in plate mail. Adenikins and Entebenners lined the edges of the jousting arena. The difference in seating apparent. The Entebin seating held a patchwork of clothing and sigils. A harsh contrast to the symmetrical, organized section belonging to the Adenikins. In any case, both were roaring with support for their chosen knights. Any attempt into introducing the participants drowned out by the two sides competing with one another to make the greater cacophony. Above it all stood Sir Adden and Darren I, seated in a special booth. The first round, Sir Adrian of Adenica versus Sir Allendale of Entebin, was the quickest of the batch, ending with Sir Adrian of Adenica, delivering a blow straight to Sir Allendale's shield, sending him immediately to the ground. The second round, Sir Maimon versus Sir Seal, went three rows, rounds, before Sir Babe Maven was dehorsed. In truth, the entire first bout was like so. An Adenikin would win, then a knight from Antipen, and then back again. And what a place to be it was. Perhaps we'll see. During the first bout, all individuals were of noble blood. Now, during the second, the Herald introduced the Unicorn Knights, peasants who had earned their knighthood through vow. Immediately, the Adenikins became agitated. Oh, imagine that, peasants becoming knights, only to call them themselves as one of their own took the field and made a show of waving their lance around. You would let Lowborns onto the field, asked Sir Ad, taking his eyes off the tournament to gaze upon Darren the First. Blood doesn't make them good at jousting, observed Darren the First. Never taking their eyes off the show, they were soon vindicated, for the first Lowborn knight, Sir Loren, toppled an identikin the thrust of a lance, sending the man not only off his horse, but into the air besides. This is unbelievable, said Sir Ed, forced to watch as one peasant after another toppled his knights one and again and again. And really, these peasants earn their spots in knighthood here. I can assure you that. And so, the final joust happened. With a sigh, Sir Adden stood up. It's not you I'm going to have to joust, is it? He asked. To which Darren the First shook her head, shook his head. Sir Adden grunted. The final de bout of the day approached, featuring Sir Adden and an individual named Sir Frederick. Though it must be noted that it was hard to hear his name over the Adenikins finally beginning to jeer. When Sir Frederick lifted his visor to reveal a large toothy grin missing the front two teeth, the antibetic seating howled. 
The two knights were able to demand absolute silence by their very presence. Both sides of the arena caught in the immediate tension of the situation. One pass, then two, then three, then four, and neither was able to catch the other out. The crowd grew louder, each pass capturing the attention of an audience that anticipated the coming crash more and more. By the time one of them was dehorsed, the crowd was calamitously loud. Even though Darren the First could not hear anything, watching Sir Ed slap away Sir Frederick's hand after the tournament left them with a sinking feeling in their stomachs. They were not likely to return next year. And I take from that that Sir Adden, or our knight, won. Sir Adden lost. And with that, I think that's the final bit of lore. It seems we have once and for all proven that we are the best knights. And with that, I can think of no better time to show the timeline. That was a terrible pun. I, I apologize. <laughs> okay. And so we started out as a two-province miner. We got a very lucky war with Duran from with the help from Wesdan. That was... Honestly, that was crazy. Then we somehow managed to win a Pyrrhic victory against Laurent, which took like 10 years, I remember. We then moved up to Portnam. Very... Very crazy move. We won a second war against... Uh, Laurent. We, for some reason, went up to uh, the Dragon Coast once we captured from Portnam. Honestly, it, I mean, it was worth it for the memes alone. I don't think we ever gained manpower from that region. Uh, a little bit after that, we took on uh, Nimscott and then Relisa, and we also went up to Chelmador, which actually did play a huge role in the upcoming wars, because it gave us the trade power from this era. We then went on to crack Laurent by breaking, taking the South Roy, and then this area over here, some kind of coast, and then we were able to take on Sorncost in its entirety, thus gaining the Isle of Vanale as they had left. And after that, the small country revolted, and that pretty much brings us to the present day, as we were cleaning up borders. We managed to get Wesdam and Wex as vassals. And we even released Laurent for a time being. The slight, uh, slight meme that that was. And finally, we ended everything off with a final conquering of the small country. And some minor border changes here. But I have been Dwarf Pete. This has been the greatest of warnings. An excellent campaign for my first one back. And I look forward to many more memories. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for a command near you soon coming to the world. Oh yeah, I hope to make borders as beautiful as that. That is gorgeous. Soon that'll be our destiny. See you in the next episode, folks.